Hello, everybody. Stoic here. And I'm feeling retrospective. Today, I'm looking back at Amnesia The Dark Descent. Frictional Games released this survival horror game on Steam in September of 2010, and it was met with a lot of praise. Frictional Games were also responsible for the Penumbra survival horror games, which followed very similarly to Amnesia in theme and gameplay. But before I get into gameplay, let's cover the story itself. The game begins with the voice of Daniel trying to remember who he is and that he must stop someone while stumbling about a castle. Finally, the player awakens and begins to explore the castle. Throughout the game, the player finds journals and experiences flashbacks that help piece together Daniel's past and what led up to the current events. 19th of August, 1839. I wish I could ask how much you remember. I don't know if there will be anything left after I consume this drink. There are two primary bits of information that are important. The first is that Daniel is being chased by a shadow. Though it reminds me more of the fungus from the Super Mario Brothers movie. Hey, it had its moments. The second is that he must stop Alexander, the Baron of the Castle, who just looks like a- OH MY GOD! Ah, oh, that's better. Now let's move on to why this game is so good. If I could sum it up into one word, I'd say immersion. But there are a few ways that this is accomplished. The most obvious is the presentation of the environment itself. Sure, a lot of survival horror games use a dark atmosphere, but that's the easy part. People are inherently apprehensive of the dark because of the uncertainty it presents. But most games don't use it for more than jump scares that you know are going to happen. Amnesia uses that fear of the dark well, and it makes you really wish you could go back to the lighter areas, a feeling that only grows stronger as you continue through the game. They even make the difference between the light and dark a gameplay mechanic, and not just simply rationing your oil for your lantern. One thing to keep track of during the game is Daniel's sanity level. Things that scare Daniel, as well as staying in the dark too long, affect his sanity, which can make playing very difficult, and can sometimes lead to death. Daniel can steady himself by staying in the light or regaining sanity by completing puzzles and progressing through the story. There is health, but usually the only physical threat to your health will kill you in two its anyway, so it's not much to worry about. That's another thing that's so scary. Before you even start playing the game, it tells you to play in a dark room and to wear headphones. That's great. Oh, and you can't kill the enemies, you have to run and hide. What?! That is one of the scariest parts about the enemy. They can't be killed. You don't know when or where they're going to show up, and when they do, you better make like the Invisible Man, or you're going to become someone's Happy Meal. The constant threat of a monster's appearance, as well as the looks of the environment, really plays to this game's strength, your own imagination. Like I mentioned, most games try to get you with cheap scares and gore, Amnesia lets your own imagination fill in the gaps, and makes you afraid of your own shadow, in addition to this one. Throw in flashbacks, disembodied voices, and forced camera movements, and you've got the complete package for a poop-inducing machine. The music fits perfectly in this game, whether it's the drum beat that fills your ears at a monster's approach, or the wailing chorus as it chases you around the castle, or the lovely harmony of safe haven after the escape. The music matches the mood and environments to a T, but it all doesn't stop there. The next piece that immerses you is the physical interaction with the environment. You have control over how much or how quickly a door opens. You pick up and rotate and even throw objects something that everyone likes to do within five seconds of learning that. This sounds really basic, but it's important. In other survival horror games, you simply press a button and you search the cabinet, or you just walk into the next room. Control is an underappreciated but important part of being immersed in a game. Of course, this also plays into the puzzles in the game that require you to move objects or make them interact with something else. The level designs of the game are simple enough that you're never going to get lost but they leave plenty of little areas for you to scour for tinderboxes, laudanum, and for oil. Fortunately, there is not a lot of platforming required except for a few rare instances. Even then, any problems you have usually come from panic, because the controls handle well enough. Overall, this game has got everything. 
It's got some gore, jump scares, environments, monsters, and plenty of times when you want to do anything but move forward. Amnesia the Dark Descent deserves all the praise it gets. It could arguably be one of the best games of all time for what it is, and certainly, without a doubt, one of the best horror games out there. Another broom and more tinder boxes. I feel like the game is trying to send me a message. I am Harry Potter. I suck at flying brooms. 